So the first talk is on a structured span selector. One, welcome to my presentation for a structured span selector. I'm Tian Yu Liu, and this is a joint work with Yuchen Jiang, Ryan Cotrell, and Moima Sachin. So first, I will introduce the concept of a span selection task in natural language processing. Span selection task is a family of tasks in natural language processing. Reference resolution, semantic role labeling, and question answering are some representative examples. In such tasks, first, a set of textual spans are selected, and then some downstream classifications or connections are done upon the selected spans. In this work, we focus on the first step of these tasks. The first problem to tackle with is the computational complexity. You know, there are O and square possible spans to be considered in this step in total, where N is the number of uh, the words in the input text. Keeping them all for the downstream tasks is almost always prohibitive. And now the de facto way to deal with this problem is to take is to take the top case spans with regard to some learned metric. Uh, the second problem to tackle with is how to model the underlying structure of these spans in a specific task. These spans that we are interested in have many properties in common. For example, in reference resolution, we um, we need to extract all the noun phrases and pronouns. This greedy method is obviously non-optimal and missing out a lot of stru structural information of the spans. Um, in this work, uh, we provide a more linguistically informed way to select these spans. Now we have given some examples of these span selection tasks. We now move on to the key hypothesis of our paper, a uh, constituent hypothesis. We claim that in most, uh, the most, most of the spans of interest in these span selection tasks are syntactic constituents. This claim sounds empirically true, and it is also reflected in many annotation instructions. For instance, in the onto nodes dataset, the annotators are given a parse tree to assist their annotation, and they're uh, explicitly asked to align their annotations to the parse tree. We also tested it out on the onto nodes dataset for both semantic row labeling and reference resolution and found it's true in almost all the cases. Now we have empirically verified this hypothesis. The first question we ask in our work is how does this uh, constituent hypothesis help? The answer to this question comes from the theory of uh, context-free grammar. So here's a quick reminder of uh, Chomsky's normal form for context-free grammars. In Chomsky normal form, uh, each production rule has either two non-terminals or one single terminal on the right-hand side. Therefore, the resulting parse tree of every sentence is a binary tree. Uh, recalling some properties of uh, binary trees, the number of non-terminals, that is the internal nodes in the tree, used uh, in each parse tree is in total is n minus one, where n is the number of words in the input sentence. In this example, we have um, five non-terminals in the parse for a sentence of six words. Now, here are some statistics from the onto nodes dataset uh, development set among the n minus one constituents. The average proportion of each type is shown in the pie chart on the left. The spans considered in span selection tasks, be it reference resolution, semantic role labeling, named entity recognition, extractive uh, question answering, and so on, are they are all chosen from these uh, constituents in the past three. Now let's get back to the question: How does the constituent hypothesis help? With this hypothesis, we can reduce the number of spans that we consider in the downstream tasks from ON squared to ON. Aside from this, it also brings us some insights on the linguistic structure 
of span selection tasks. Um, in addition to that, uh, this formulation actually converts the uh, once intractable NP hard subset selection problem to a context free parsing problem. Uh, we know that this context free parsing problem can be solved in polynomial time with uh, some very well known algorithms. And instead of giving a top K approximation of uh, some learned metrics, we directly extract the optimal parts from the parse tree uh, for, for, of the input sentence. Now we ask the second question in our work. Can we define a context-free grammar uh, in order to uh, model the spans of interest in the span selection tasks? To keep the generality of our model, we restrain the use of any uh, actual syntactic constituents such as noun phrase, verb phrase, etc. Um, instead, we define some task agnostic context free grammar, uh, with, which has only three uh, non terminals instead, uh, corresponding to the root, the span of interest, and the span not of interest. Uh, in practice, they do not have to correspond to any specific syntactic category. Uh, their configuration can be directly learned from the downstream tasks, which we will talk about later. And a set of production rules is also defined on the, uh, in the table on the right. And each of this rule, uh, each of these rules is associated with a learnable weight. So we can score a given parse by uh, a given parse tree by multiplying all the weights of the rules used, or find the single best parse tree of a sentence using the very famous CKY algorithm. Okay, now after getting the best parse, we extract all the non-terminals at sigma from it and they correspond to the spans that we are interested in during the span selection phase. Now we introduce how to train this model with uh, various downstream tasks. To design a probabilistic model, we need to compute the likelihood of a span being of interest. This likelihood, also known as uh, an the anchored probability in parsing, is defined, of, uh, is defined as the sum of probability of parses that contain the uh, span of interest, and it can be uh, very efficiently computed using the Eisner's algorithm. Uh, please refer to our paper for the detailed derivation of this equation. And this likelihood can be easily uh, combined with the likelihood of the downstream task in a plug and play manner, then the model can be trained end to end using a negative log likelihood loss. Now we have introduced our method. We will show some experimental results on reference resolution and semantic row labeling. We did experiments on the Kono 2012 dataset, also known as onto nodes. We evaluate our model on reference resolution. We see consistent gains with a significant reduction in memory conduct, uh, consumption. We also evaluated on the Kono 2012 semantic row labeling task. And again, we have seen consist consistent gains over the Grady baseline model, as well as a significant memory reduction. We also compared our uh, uh, the performance of the span selection for reference resolution. The x-axis is the number of spans selected per word, and the y-axis is the number of uh, the ground truth spans recalled. Our model is the red square well above the curve of the Grady model. From the uh, plot, we can see that our model can recall uh, much more ground truth spans of interest with less spans uh, selected. That is to say, our model is much more accurate. And in this table, it is shown that our model performs better on recalling wider spans and uh, deeply nested spans, uh, which are the two most uh, tricky cases for greedy non-structured models. For example, in the uh, top uh, table, we achieve 96.5 record rate of spans, 
ranging from five words to 12 words, and we achieve uh, 85.2 uh, correct for spans that are longer than 12 words. And for uh, deeply nested uh, spans, uh, we recall like 93.2 and 93.9, uh, which has um, which is significantly uh, more accurate than the uh, greedy non-structured models. Okay, so in conclusion, we propose a generic framework to deal with span selection tasks. A linguistic inductive bias is verified and utilized to design a generic grammar for span selection tasks. Uh, the model does not need extra supervision signals and it can be applied in a plug and play manner. We show that our method is more accurate and less memory consuming. And finally, we release our code for the structured span selector together with uh, the PyTorch CUDA kernels used in our model for efficient context-free parsing. Uh, that's all, thank you. Okay, we have time for some questions. Um, there are two microphones, please use either one for in-person questions. Um, looks like we don't have any Zoom questions yet. Um, maybe I can start with one question. Um, so I think you very convincingly showed the, the sort of efficiency benefits of doing structured inference. Yep. Um, have you thought about maybe uh, sort of also doing structure, adding more structured features? So once you have that, that cross structure, do you think, um, modeling sort of say the, the inner structure of the constituents would give you benefit for co-reference or is this largely an efficiency benefit? Um, yes, that's a uh, very good question. Um, we can definitely use uh, the extracted um, structure of the underlying uh, latent grammar. But um, uh, as we uh, mentioned before, we are mainly using this um, like uh, this Anchored, oops, uh, this anchored probability of uh, all these spans, and this spans has been used as uh, some soft features for uh, many tasks, uh, like uh, named entity recognition, uh, say uh, reference distillation for uh, even decades, and I think this is the uh, uh, this this probability already contains most of the structure. Uh, information of all the past trees because it is some kind of Bayesian um, average of all the all the possible let's say uh, parse trees that can be derived from the input sentence um, okay if not let's thank the speaker again thank you